welcome to a new, 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 new Nightfly. Private talks only. You see, we're in a new studio, we have new setups and we have wonderful guests. And we start with a guest, a special guest from the United States, Tom Moore from the Memory School. Welcome, Tom. Hello, Dittmar. Hey. How are you? <laughs> Great hey. to see you. Great to see you. It's wonderful to have you in the show. And you actually, you're in South Carolina in Columbia. In the United States, that's correct. Yes. Yep. And uh, for the people out there, we know us quite a couple of years. And... Um, I'm really excited what you're doing over all these years um, and not really be, let's say, visible. You're doing this really in a more than less private or personal relationship. You run or you founded the memory school. Tom, what, what is a memory school? Well, let me, let me first show you something here if you're... Uh... If your viewers are going to be able to see this, in 1989, yes. I was in California on a business trip, and I had an afternoon free, and I rented a car, and I was going to go drive up the California coast, and I got about 10 minutes down the road, and I saw this sign that said the Bornstein School of Memory, and it really piqued my curiosity because I had remembered that this man had been on the Johnny Carson show one night and had done this memory feat where he called out the name of every guest in the audience. And so I ended up pulling into his driveway. I spent uh, three hours with him. He, at that time, he was in his uh, 80s, but extremely yeah. sharp mentally. And I left there with a bunch of his materials, one of which was this book, And I was just infused with the uh, of a spirit of this is something we've got to bring to the children's attention, to the teachers, to the school districts. So that was 1989. So that's, that's uh, quite a time, or? It, it is. It is. And actually, several years transpired before anybody really asked me to help them. And one night, my neighbor came to me, and her son was, I think he was either the sixth or the seventh grade, was doing pretty poorly in school. And she said, you know, you've talked about these things for years. Do you think you could help him? So I said, I, I think so. So I started with him and actually had two friends with him the very first time we met. And they needed to learn the names of the countries in the bottom half of Africa, as well as the capitals and kind of quickly bring the story to a close. They were the only children that next week to score 100 on their exam. And I worked with this young man, not, not very often, maybe once or twice a week for the next two or three months. And at the end of that period of time, the school wanted to test him as a gifted learner. So these systems are incredible, Dittmar. Uh, I know, I know, Tom, I was, with you in some events with we had 140 50 people in the room students teachers all kind of people from from schools and you made your demonstration and they just were falling back actually they wrote letters to their deans in their university uh, to use the system uh, and one student was really using it in front of his exams and writing a wonderful letter. I saw the letter. So um, it's an extraordinary experience when, <laughs> when I see the people using the system. Uh, uh, and when I said, you have shown this just privately to people, you helped children, you helped adults to achieve uh, their numbers in school uh, or in their jobs. Uh, but now you go online, you go Worldwide, or Tom, that's the that, that's the next that step. Yeah, that's the next and, step. And you know, Dip, I tell you, I've got the easiest job in the world, and I'll tell you why. Uh, a few years ago, uh, a research institute here in the United States yeah. 
made an assessment that every person has the ability to process 70 trillion items from their their brain every minute. Wow. And, and you know, that number is it's just so large, it's so extraordinary, we really can't even begin to comprehend it. But right now we have a crisis in education. And what that crisis is, is that the world has changed a lot in the last 10 years. And the type of information you need to possess to have a good job is very abstract, it's very technical. And the human mind doesn't deal efficiently with abstract technical knowledge. So what we're doing at the memory system is we're, we're first of all starting out with a math curriculum. And this will begin with the course pre-algebra, and then it'll go all the way up to three levels of calculus, differential equations, trigonometry, all the information that's necessary mathematically for you to be a really successful person in our new world economy. And the only way you can actually achieve that for, or for most people is to use your senses, meaning you turn this knowledge into pictures and then you attach sound to those pictures, you attach touch, smell, taste, and then emotion. And this is the natural learning language of the brain. Is, you know, no, for exactly what you're over doing, 2,000 years. You, you, you turn, and that's, that's the hard work, actually, Are Taking pictures, finding the right pictures, finding the right explanation that it makes sense, that the people understand. Uh, and then when this is done, it's very easy. And using all the senses uh, together, uh, you cannot fail, actually, Are in, in learning. It's, it's, it's almost impossible not to okay. learn. Okay. Um, and and I, I was going to say before we started talking about that, you know, for over 2,000 years, the type of work people did, let's say you wanted to become, a, uh, say, a brick mason. Well, you worked probably with your father or your grandfather or your uncle, and you were physically taught how to become a brick mason by sitting there and watching them work. And so that was all in three dimension. And then there were smells associated with working. You smelled the mortar, you smelled the residue from the rock. You touched, you lifted these rocks, you put them into place. Uh, maybe sometimes you accidentally tasted a bunch of the, the mortar in your mouth, uh, or you were certainly drinking a lot of water because you got hot. So you were learning that trade through all of your senses. Now what's happened, we go to, we now in, are in a phase where we have to know very abstract information. So you look at it in a book and say, say it's a math term or it's a math formula and it has no shape to it. It's not three dimensional. It doesn't have any sound, doesn't have any of the other senses. Well, that is contrary to how the brain functions and learns. So what we're doing is we are actually formatting information in the natural learning language of the brain. Tom, can you show us, me and the audience out there, some of the pictures and a little bit of an explanation that people have a little bit of an idea, let's say, I, I would not say simple, but it's easy to understand. I think that's the right the right word and then the explanation Certainly. and practice. That's for sure. It's not something like this, but you have to practice. You explain. So in when you coming out online, you explain the pictures, you do studies, you give lessons uh, so people can easily learn under your instructions uh, the way for the future. And it's everything. It's basically you start with pre algebra but it's IT later on. So everything what you have abstract, you can turn in in pictures and you can learn on the natural way of learning. What, what is the natural learning way of your brain? That's maybe some people have the, the question. What, what is this? Well, right now we're actually learning from each other. We're doing this video yep. show, right? So 
I have a vision of you that's going to my brain in three dimension. I'm, we're talking back and forth, and so that sound is part of that three-dimensional picture. Now, we don't have smell or taste, but we also have emotion because we're excited to be together to explain this concept to people and to show people there is a very viable alternative to learning. I mean, they're, they're, they're in a position right now in the world where they virtually do not know or they're not aware of how easily they can learn anything regardless of the complexity or the regardless of how abstract it is so that's the difference between our learning experience right now which is the natural learning language of the brain and then opening opening this book for instance and reading a bunch of words let's, let's see something do you have something we can have a look on just a couple pictures and a little bit of an explanation. I do. Okay. okay, let me tell you what I did for you all today. I created a simple PowerPoint presentation yep. and we're going to learn a, a pretty simple math formula. We're going to learn how to convert Celsius temperature, which you're familiar with yep. in Europe, to Fahrenheit, which is the temperature uh, grade that we use in the United States. So let me, let me give this to you right yep. now, Dimar. So great, really, and I enjoyed it so much when I was in the university and saw the faces and all the discussions afterwards. Um, and you really have to experience this and go through. And there's so many things you can do uh, with this with this system. Uh, and I'm very glad um, that this is uh, coming now for everybody, basically. It's not uh, only uh, for a small yeah, circle of people. This is for everybody. And it's for, for kids, for adults. Uh, even if you want to change your job and, and you want to go to IT and uh, robotics takes over, uh, you have to have these skills. Um, so let's see uh, how simple it could be um, to learn something if you really have to wish uh, to do something and um, yeah and uh, especially little little kids and and Tom you have family members small small kids uh, and they learn and they really up in school are they uh, the top the top learners in in school okay so now, okay, so now do you have my yes. slide in front Perfect. of you wonderful okay very yep. good okay so so we call ourselves the memory yep. school and we're going to be on the net uh, uh, on the internet as the memory school.net so here we go we're going to learn a simple math formula using a memory system and what's our formula okay well it's fahrenheit which is equal to a fraction nine divided by five times celsius plus 32. All right, so the very first step is the word Fahrenheit is an abstract word. So we're going to turn that into a picture. And the picture that I'm coming up with is going to sound similar so I can remember what I was trying to learn. So in this case, it, Fahrenheit sounds to me like a Ferris wheel and it has a great height. So there's your picture. Very simple. Now, second thing we've got to do is we've got to turn the equal sign into a, a noun, also again, that sounds similar. So let's try the word mm -hmm. equator. Yep. There's your picture, very simple. All right, the next one is going to be the fraction. Now, this is a little complex, uh, but it's, it's, there's a lot of logic to it and it's very simple. So here we go. So the um, first thing we've got to turn, turn a picture into is the number nine. So if you look at number nine, if you were to kind of flip it over to the right, it would resemble a letter P. Now, with our system, uh, we've got vowels in the alphabet, A, E, I, O, U. And then also we have three letters that make up the word Y. Whenever we see any one of these letters, any one of the vowels or any letter of Y, we don't count that in our in our picture uh, valuation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the word ape 
APE. Now, when I work with my children in school, we kind of do this. I say, well, why is ape number nine? They say, well, you cross out the A. The P, as we flipped over, is number nine, and you cross out the E. So we now taken a very abstract item information, the number nine, which is very difficult to remember, turned it into an ape. All right, now let's go to the cross sign. You know, in a fraction, the slash is, is the top number divided by the bottom number. All right, so the slash sounds like it, it, it's a division sign or divide. That sounds like a divan, a couch. So there's your picture. All right, number five, we're going back into our little system. So if you were to hold up your five fingers and drop your thumb down perpendicular, it looks like the shape of an L. Now, once again, A, E, I, O, U, and Y, no value. So we're going to turn number five into a wool cap. You cross out the W, cross out the O, cross out the O, L is five. Now, the multiplication sign, that sounds like a multiple colored pair of pliers for multiplication. Pretty simple. Now, Celsius, that's that's pretty easy one for me. That sounds like a cell phone. Now, the plus sign is addition. So we're going to say advertising sign for the plus. And then the last one is 32. Now, we're going to go into our little system again. Pretty simple here. It takes three downstrokes to make an M. It takes two downstrokes to make an N. So we come up with the word money. M-O-N-E-Y. Once again, M is three, cross out the O. N is two, cross out the E, cross out the Y. So now you've got all the little pictures. Now what we do is we're going to use something that I think is truly incredible, Ditmar. Uh, within the last maybe 20, 25 years, with real-time brain scanning, they learned that if you move your eye in certain positions, if you think about your eye as a clock, it actually opens the specific part of the brain that deals with senses. So real quickly, let's go through what that is. So if you're at one o'clock, that's where you create pictures, you're, you're making pictures. Three o'clock is where you create sounds. That's a great position for somebody to use when they're doing your work uh, of learning how to sing, Ditmar. Uh, five o'clock is where you create touch. Seven o'clock is creation of emotion. Now, once you've created your pictures, you're going to then move to 11 o'clock because you're no longer going to be creating pictures. You're now going to be recalling them. And nine o'clock, you're going to be recalling sounds. Now, the center of your face, if you think of it just right up above your upper lip, if you go 10 degrees above center, you run into your nose. Well, that's you move into that position. That's where you create your smells. 10 degrees below center, you create tastes. So here we go. So this is how the more the memory school will be delivering to you information for you to use all your senses to learn this formula. So we're going to start out first with our picture. Now, 95% of all these sensory impressions that go to your brain come from your eyes. So the eyesight, the picture is the key, is the key sense. So let's run through our pictures here. So we have a Ferris wheel that rose to a great height for Fahrenheit. It's located next to the equator for equal. And it was written by an ape. Now remember, our ape is going to be number nine. He's sitting on a divan. Imagine the ape's actually sitting on this divan while he's riding this Ferris wheel. See that picture in your mind. Now he's wearing a very colorful wool cap. We see that over on the right for five. Now, while, he's, while the Ferris wheel is going around, he's holding on to a pair of pliers that are holding on to his cell phone. And as he looks out in the distance, he sees this big advertising sign and it's covered with stacks of money. Now, what our students will do is they will actually think about positioning their eye at one o'clock. I don't encourage people actually to push their eyes in this direction because you can get a little bit of a ten yeah. tension headache. So it's enough just to imagine that your eyes at one and see that picture. 
see the Ferris wheel at the equator. Maybe the equator is right next to some water and maybe actually a big line in the ocean. And you see an ape's up there and maybe he's jumping up and down real excited on the divan and he's pulling on that beautiful wool cap. And then he's got those multicolored pliers in his hand holding a cell phone. And he looks into the distance at the highway sign and he sees stacks of money. Now maybe he's wondering, gosh, is that really real money? All right, now we're gonna go to the, what I call the minor senses. So let's move our eye gently or think about moving it gently to three o'clock. And we hear music being played over the loudspeaker as the Ferris wheel goes to a great height. Now move your eye gently or think about moving it to five. Sense the hands of the ape. Now, as he starts to ride up there, he's getting nervous. So he tightly clenches his wool cap and his pliers every time it goes to the top of the height. All right, and let's now think about being 10 degrees above our center into smell and smell there's wonderful fried foods being cooked in small trailers all around the ferris wheel and the apes thinking about well as soon as i get off here i'm going to go eat some of that great food now let's go to 10 degrees down and imagine that he actually has some of that food up there with him and he starts chewing on it as he's riding on the elevator now let's Think about our eyes at seven o'clock. Now emotion, what emotion is, Ditmar? It's a compilation of all the other senses put together. So here we go, the Ferris, every time the Ferris wheel rises to a great height, the ape stares intently out there at that advertising sign and he's trying to figure out if the stacks of money are real. All right, so you have just used all your senses and pictures to learn a pretty simple formula. And if you think about going through your pictures in right now, you think about Fahrenheit equals nine over five times C mm -hmm. plus 32. Now, repetition yeah. is extremely important. I don't want to get into all the brain science about that, but what we will do in the courses is, is over a two week period, we will repeat this between four to six times. And what that does is that reinforces the original knowledge going in your brain to the, to the point that it becomes permanent retrievable no, knowledge. A... And I, I use the acronym PARK, P-A-R-K, where parking information in people's minds, like a parking yeah. garage, so they can yeah. go in there and grab it pull it out and use it, and then put it back there whenever they need to in the Tom, future. There is a, 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 uh, a story, I think 30, uh, 30 years ago, 30 years I did ago. 10 finger typewriting learning yeah. by pictures, but I never practices really while I was not writing uh, that much, but I still remember today where my little finger has to go with the lake and the little dock and, uh, and a tree. Uh, uh, I have the picture still in my head when I when I see this. So if I had practiced this all the time, I had all the pictures there. But this was unbelievable, unbelievable. Well, you know, in in my uh, working on this in the last three or four years, I've actually taught a variety of subjects in school to demonstrate this. I've taught chemistry, I've taught anatomy. I've taught mathematics, I've taught Spanish, uh, none of those courses of which I really had a great amount of yeah. knowledge yeah. of before. But it's interesting, I can remember from five and six years ago, like in chemistry, I created images for um, ionic compounds. I can still remember those <laughs> pictures today. Tom, uh, when are and, you going online? When, when is this uh, available, uh, the Brie algebra, for, for example, in the, in the beginning? Well, we're, we're uh, hoping to have everything online and starting by the middle of February at the latest. We might be on there a little bit okay. sooner than that. And let me share, let me share with you what's yes. going to be in this pre-algebra course. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to teach the multiplication and division tables mm -hmm. at the very beginning. Uh, I, I've really been astounded, Ditmar, in my work on this in the last three or four years, how uh, that subject is so crucial yeah. in math, and yet it's a pure memory exercise, 
And so many of the students I've worked with, uh, even students of college age, don't know those tables. Wow. So we're going to start with that. It's all going to be in pictures. Then we will be offering the course. It'll be comprised of 12 chapters. And we'll be using a system. And, and if you want to possibly do a follow-up yes. show, uh, I'm going to teach on the next show what we call the number alphabet. Now, I've given you a taste of that today with yep. the nine and the three and the two and the five. But with that system, you can turn any number of pictures or any number of, of, of digits into a wow. picture. So ultimately what's going to happen is our students with pre-algebra are going to have total recall of the entire chapter, sub-chapter, and sub-sub-chapter yeah. sequences wow. of the whole course. Tom, you should, you should have your uh, education and, and, show, actually. We should set something up and you come regularly well, uh, and explain all the steps uh, to people in, in, in person. Well, you know, I'd be, I'd be really honored to do that. Um, you know, as you and I have talked about this, I, of course, this is a, a business venture for me, but the truth of the matter is I'm really trying to help people understand that knowledge is easily within their grasp of any subject. That's how you started. And you all this stuff uh, for, the, for the children and for the people, it was not, was not an intention. You, you, you have a regular job and <laughs> you've been successful in business. Well, that's so. true. Well, and, and I, I since yes. retired from that, and it, it's been very interesting. Over the years, there have been parents that I worked with their children 10, 15, 20 years ago, and I would see them and they'd say, you know, uh, we really wish you would do something with your memory business. They said it's so valuable and so impactful with everybody that you work with. So that's really what's motivated me finally to sit down and say, okay, we're going to figure out how we can use technology to reach everybody in the world. Uh, as, as you also know, it, it, I had the experience in Portugal yep. of meeting uh, a gentleman who was the first individual that I've talked with for over 20 years that knew exactly what I was talking about with yep. these memory systems. It turned out that he had actually even studied a, a book that I had studied over the years, and we knew similar images that we would apply for certain numbers right. with the number alphabet. Right. Well, that was one person in hundreds. But now in hundreds. It's, it's a chance for so, a lot of people around the world uh, to get this knowledge and do something with it. And, and Tom, I would, I would really appreciate if we could do a second show and going even in more details and talk how we can set this up that you come online or even in person. You want to come to, to Portugal, to travel to Portugal also uh, to record things and have uh, some meetings um, to come online and show this in, in, the, in the studio and do an education program and, and do it step by step. How, how this sounds for you? Would this be feasible? That sounds wonderful. That sounds wonderful. I'd like to work out some details with Perfect. you. And uh, the mission here is to take this to the world and to let the world achieve and succeed. Thank you very much, Tom. I think this is a great finish for the show. Great, great words. And we continue uh, and plan ahead. And um, yeah, if you, you want to say something to the audience to the end, Well, I, you know, I, I sincerely appreciate my friend Dittmar's efforts here. Uh, I'm not really a technically oriented person, so his, his uh, capabilities are really going to enhance what we're trying to do. But believe me, your experience with education can turn immediately to, to something of great achievement. And this is also incredibly fast. I'll just close with one little minor statistic here. In 2013, at a very prestigious uh, research institute in America, they clocked or they were testing how fast the mind recognizes a picture. And the result was 11 one thousandths of a second. So that translates into I can start to teach children or undereducated adult math courses that you would think would take an entire school year to learn 
you can now easily learn this in three, four, six weeks, depending on your age. So the, the idea of learning 16 math courses to take you up to a very advanced capability in calculus is not a long-term plan. This is something that can be achieved okay. in a year. And young people can do this as well. So that's my goal. And I'm looking forward to working with you, Detmar, so we Thank can bring this to nice. the world. Thank you very much for coming to the show. Thank you very much, Tom. And we see us and we continue. And thank you for the audience watching. And if you have any questions, you want to know more, write us. You get all our information here and we get you in touch with Tom. And as soon as he is out online, we let you know and we do a follow-up show online with you and with your site up, your page up and the people can visit you directly and get all the information they need. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching and see you next time very soon. Thank you very much. Take care.